So a new cologne version of Givenchy's Gentleman Givenchy has been launched and I was very, very curious about it because you know, we have Dior Homme Cologne, we have Galan L'Homme Ideal Cologne and same parent company LVMH has launched a cologne version of one of their more popular men's fragrances and it's actually really, really a great scent. I'm going to tell you all about Givenchy Gentleman Givenchy Cologne coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. If this is your first time landing on this channel and you love watching fragrance reviews, discovering new fragrances, discovering new brands, and participating in giveaways and still haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So I have the original Givenchy Gentleman Givenchy that was launched in late 2017. And then also in early 2018, they launched the EDP version of Gentleman Givenchy in the black bottle. Now in 2019 we have the cologne version. They're rushing these fragrances out really fast but I was very very curious about this one because I really love the EDP version of this uh, fragrance series and this one does not disappoint as far as the smell goes. So this is a 2019 launch. Even though it's called Gentleman Givenchy Cologne, it comes in Eau de Toilette concentration. It is a citrus floral woody fragrance and a 100 ml bottle like this retails for $88. There are two perfumers behind this fragrance, Natalie Lorson and Olivier Cresp. And both of them have created this and of course the previous two versions. And Natalie Lorson is a, a, a perfumer that I'm really, really uh, a fan of. I love her creation especially when it comes to designer fragrances because she's created a ton of fragrances that the community knows about uh, probably doesn't know her by name as far as a perfume as far as being the perfumer but she's created fragrances like Bentley for Men Intense La, the whole entire Lalique en Cré Noir series she's also created um, a few fragrances that I really love from recent times like Le Labo's Another 13 Lancôme's Iris Dragué she also has done the Mandarina Duck Black and Black Extreme Fragrances, Zadigan Voltaire, This Is Him, Spice Bomb, Night Vision. So those are some of the fragrances that she's created. And of course, I love what she does as far as designer fragrances go. And this does not disappoint as far as the smell goes. So what do we have for notes in the Gentleman Givenchy Cologne? In the top, you have the notes of citrus and rosemary. In the heart, you've got iris. And the base, you've got musk and vetiver. So not a lot going on. Of course, this is a, a, a lighter cologne version, an easier to wear version uh, of the original. And personally, uh, as far as smells go, I prefer number two, the EDP, and now I prefer uh, the Cologne at number two, and the original release at number three. The original release just was kind of boring for me, even though I like it. When you compare it to the, this one and the, the one in the black bottle and EDP, uh, they don't smell too close. I think the pear note in that one was too amped up and I didn't get much iris from it. But I do get lots of iris here and of course in the EDP. So this one starts off very citrusy and spicy at the top. I feel like I'm getting lemons and lemon blossoms. It's a very lemony uh, experience as far as the citruses go. It doesn't say what kind of citrus uh, notes there are but I'm getting a lemony touch, but I'm getting it not so uh, tart. It's a sweeter lemon and it's a also floral, like lemon blossoms rather than orange blossoms or neroli. It's more lemon blossom, even maybe perhaps a little bit of lime and lime blossom, but it's, it's nicely blended with that rosemary at the top. So you do get a bit of a spicy herbal touch aromatic touch at the at the top but it's a nice segue to the heart where it's all about iris and i think the dominant note here is the iris the iris pretty much dominates the entire experience of the fragrance so it's a very powdery fragrance for me i just have to say this one it's such a great wearing experience as far as the smell goes. I'm absolutely head over heels for the way it smells. It's powdery, it's irisy, it's also very citrusy, lemony. It's almost like you're experiencing powdered citruses, if, um, if you understand what I mean by that. So you've got the powdery touches, but it's got so much citruses and citrus floral notes thrown in. The powder, like it's, if you dust a powder like that, the smell of the, the citruses is nicely blended in the powder. So that's my experience with this one. And it dries down to a nice vetiver musk. It's the vetiver that's not overly vetivery, so it's very, very tolerable if you're kind of turned off by wearing vetiver fragrances. If they if you think it, it can go too dark or too green, 
doesn't jump out too much as far as the vetiver goes, but you do experience the vetiver touches. It's also very, very woody in the base as well because of that vetiver along with the musk. Um, it's a great smelling fragrance. It's so good actually. It's perfect for spring and summer. I feel like it's a powdery spring fragrance for men, uh, but uh, the disappointing factor about this one is its longevity. It doesn't really long last too long, unfortunately. Uh, I'm getting about four and a half hours with this one tops. It's unfortunate because it smells so good and as it's disappearing on me, I keep wanting to apply more of it on me. I don't know, maybe it's my body chemistry, the way this fragrance works, but I don't know if you guys have experienced it yet. Let me know how the wearing experience is with this one because for such a great smelling fragrance, I wanted it to last a little longer. I mean, it's even much, much better to me than the original Eau de Toilette. But when you put the name or the word cologne on, I'm thinking like it's going to be wearing like an Eau de Cologne where it's very, very light with not too much um, uh, perfume concentration thrown in there. But it's, it's, it's so good. It's really, really good as far as smells go. Now, if I was to toss up between Dior Homme Cologne and L'Homme Ideal Cologne, I think this one is the winner out of the three as far as smells go. Then we go to Dior Homme Cologne and then we go to L'Homme Ideal Cologne. Anyway, um, I'm happy with the, the way it smells, disappointed with the longevity, but I think when you put that word cologne on it, uh, it's pretty much what you're gonna get. A very, very light experience. I think this will be perfect for summertime. Uh, it's not gonna be intense, it's not gonna be overwhelming. Uh, I think it's also gonna be perfect for cooler, I mean warmer spring days, and of course warmer fall days. I think this is perfect for spring, summer, and fall. Just, like I said, carry the bottle with you or carry some decants of it with you so that you can replenish because I'm just having a difficult time um, with the longevity on this one. But other than that, smell-wise, it's amazing, guys. Have you tried Givenchy Gentleman Cologne yet? Are you a fan of the colognes from uh, these uh, fragrances such as Dior Homme Cologne and uh, Garland's L'Homme Ideal Cologne. Let me know if you like the cologne versions of the fragrances. Uh, otherwise, let me know if you're a fan of the original or the Eau de Parfum so I can find out what you guys like. And let me also know if you're a fan of Nathalie Lorson. Uh, she's, uh, as I said, uh, one of my favorite perfumers as far as designer fragrances go. Please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye.